Hey guys, what is going on? Uh, it's Ordinary here. Um, this video is a little bit different than um, anything I've ever put up before. Um, I bet you most of you have seen the new teaser trailer for NHL 15. Um, and along with that video uh, came a whole bunch of videos from users showing um, the changes that they want to see from 14 to 15. And uh, that's kind of what this is, although um, this isn't going to be a big general changes video. Um, honestly, 75%, I bet, uh, of the time that I spend in this game, I spend in GM mode. So I feel like if I'm qualified to talk about anything at all, um, that's what it would be. It would be changes in GM mode. And uh, I think that GM mode is probably one of the more polished modes in this game. Um, there's definitely uh, other other game types that could use a lot more work but that's kind of why I avoid those ones so what I'm gonna do is uh, just cover maybe one change per video here and uh, put these out on a uh, regular basis if you guys kind of enjoy this kind of thing and want to know more about my opinions on the game um, yeah and the first video here um, this is a brand new GM mode haven't even played uh, one game of the preseason nothing haven't made any trades or anything and I'm just going to show you guys something right quick in the trading block. I've already set this up. Um, I'm just, oh, this one's all fucked up. 88 to 0. That could be a change. Stop fucking doing this. There we go. Alright, so here's the best players in the game. Sort by overall. Uh, first, the best player in the game right now is Pavel Datsuk. And keep your eye up in the top right. I'm going to go to the scouting info. Um, he was drafted 171st overall. Okay, keep that in mind. Crosby first, Ovechkin first, Stamkos first, Taves third, Malkin second. Getzlaff was uh, 19th in his draft year. Perry was the same draft year, uh, 28th. Uh, Tavares, he was first. We don't need to look at that. Uh, Giroux, Giroux went 22nd. Zetterberg, 210th. Uh, Joe Thornton, he was an early guy. First overall. Bergeron. Uh, 45th overall, okay, Hosa, 12th overall, Parise, 17th overall, Kopitar, 11th overall, Patty Kane, he was the first, uh, or, yeah, James Neal, uh, 33rd overall, Patrick Sharp, 95th overall, Rick Nash, he was, everyone knows he was first, uh, Mike Richards, 24th overall, Jeff Carter, 11th overall, Eric Stahl, uh, he went second. Pacioretty, 22nd. Taylor Hall, he was the first. Spezza, second. Phil the Thrill, fifth. Jamie Benn, 129th. Okay, you guys get the point, right? You see a lot of uh, top five picks. You see um, not very many, surprisingly. Um, in the second half, there was like uh, Corey Perry. That's about it uh, in that first round. And then you see a few second rounders, a few third rounders, and then a, um, not a lot, but like a sixth rounder, a seventh rounder, a fifth rounder. Those are the best forwards in the game. Uh, the same thing you're going to see with defensemen. Uh, Petrangelo went fourth overall. Oh, I should be sorting by overall. Sorry, guys. Chara went 56th overall. Suter went seventh overall. Shea Weber went 49th overall. Duncan Keith, 54th overall. Petrangelo, we already checked. Latang, 62nd overall. Seabrook, 14th overall. Cronwall, 29th overall. Uh, PK Subban, 43rd overall. And we can do this all day, guys. Like, uh, look at that. That's when there was eight rounds. He went 245th. Buffalo did. So, um, what I'm trying to get at is not every single player that is uh, in the top. 15 in this game comes from the first 10 picks in the draft. Um, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, I'm going to show you guys something right here. And let's take a look at some of the best players in the year 2025. Alright. Sort by overall. We got Connor McDavid. He's on my team. I can tell you when I drafted him. It was first overall. Uh, Jonathan Drouin. Uh, he went last year fourth overall. Nathan McKinnon went first overall. Stoner, uh, he's on my team. I took him fourth overall. Uh, Tavares, he's a first. Stamkos is a first. Barkov's a second. 
Benin. He's on my team. I took him first overall. Uh, this Fred Parent guy on Minnesota, he was a first overall pick. Uh, Vertanen, he went ninth, so still top ten. Uh, Logan Couture, uh, he's even a uh, top ten pick. Sagan, he went second. Uh, Lucic. Now you're getting into players that already exist, so it's not it's not a uh, a prospect that the game generated, or one that was even um, had potential for uh, for very long when um, when I started my GM mode. Patan, Reinhardt. Let's see. I'm trying to get down to some players that uh, that aren't real. Okay. Well, that's all the ones <laughs> are on the top. Um, if I lower this to about 86 or 80, or a fucking Back down to zero. See? That could be a fix. Okay. I'm just trying to find some players that aren't actual players. Um, let's see. Uh, where's age? Anyone who's about 27 shouldn't actually... Oh, well. It's not going to show up. But you guys saw what I was doing there, right? From the top. Um, I can do it with defense as well. Eric Carlson, uh, Hampus Lindholm here. I guess he was already actually drafted. He was drafted sixth overall. Uh, Jones second. Let's see, where's someone that uh, wasn't, isn't a real guy? Uh, this Dingman, okay. Dustin Dingman, the enforcer defenseman. He was a first overall pick. Um, Brian Morchinitz. He was a third overall pick. Raphael Mayhew, he's a real guy. Um, now we're just getting into actual people. But, uh, do you guys see the point I'm trying to make? Every player that turns into a bona fide uh, stud in this game comes from the first ten picks in the draft. You're not going to find um, any players second overall, tenth overall. You don't find enough players uh, in any later rounds that turn into your tops, uh, top three or your uh, top two defensemen. Uh, everyone comes from the top ten picks, and that should be something that changes in the new game uh, is... Some more, like, uh, some hidden gems there in the draft. And they did a little bit better this year than last year. Um, you can find players in the second and third rounds that turn into good depth players. Like, in uh, in NHL 13, you were... There was no point in having um, a second round pick past the first two or three years in the draft. Um, now, you can still draft some good players in the second round. Uh, and that second round pick isn't totally useless. And on rarer occasions, you can pull uh, pull someone good out of the third round. But like Datsuk was what was he sixth round? Um, Bufflin was eighth round. Zetterberg was seventh round. Like those players are good in the NHL. And um, maybe they want to uh, put some better stuff onto the scouting, where um, where you spend your whatever they're called. Your, uh, where's that thing? What am I looking for? Your staff thing. Why, where is it? Maybe they're already maxed out or something, but, um, you know what I mean? When you, uh, where the fuck is that thing? Okay, guys, yeah, see, I'm not crazy. There it is down there. Um, I just wasn't seeing it because in the, on that GM I have everyone fully upgraded, so I guess it just disappears. Um, but yeah, see, pro scout, uh, amateur scout, you feel like these things um, should do something. Uh, give you better access to those players, and don't make it like a fucking four-point slider. Like, you play five seasons of GM mode, you have this full no matter what. Make it, uh, you know, in-depth. No one wants to come into the screen, slap their stick to the right a couple times, and be done with it. Like this, uh, this back end, no one goes here. Sometimes people go to this 
for three seconds to give their guys some more points. Um, let's upgrade the scouting in NHL 15. Um, we need um, to see some better players deep in the drafts. You need some studs and you need some duds. Um, along the same lines, you don't really see anyone um, bust. First overalls, second overalls. Uh, a top five pick is, you know, gonna be a good player in the league. And uh, if we look through history, that's not always the case. Um, usually it is, but you're gonna see people that uh, definitely don't live up to their hype. And um, I think that would be a neat um, little thing to throw into uh, GM mode. Sometimes your first overall just doesn't turn into a good player. And uh, here's one more thing also about scouting, you guys. Um, I don't know if you've noticed this, but uh, there is really no point in scouting anything other than the WHL. Uh, here's what I mean. This is, I'm back in uh, my Dallas gym. And uh, look at this. Forwards in the WHL, there's 23 prospects. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, eight of them um, are in the first round as forwards. Three of them are in the first round as defensemen. So there's uh, over a third of the first round prospects are uh, from the WHL. Uh, hold on a second. I'm going to switch over to uh, another GM mode I've got going. Okay, guys, here we are. Uh, we're back in my uh, Vancouver GM mode. Uh, look at this. WHL uh, forwards. One, two, three. Three of the top five are forwards in the WHL. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten of them are uh, WHL forwards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six of them are WHL defensemen, so what is that, 16? So that's uh, half, because some of these are sl uh, slash seconds, so they'll be early second to late first. And uh, one goalie. So 17 prospects are from the WHL that are supposed to go in the first round. Um, if you want to look at uh, my uh, Phoenix GM, what I'm doing with you guys, you'll see the exact same thing now that we're a couple years in. Um, they just, it's lazy. They don't want to uh, put anyone else, look at this. Uh, you got a couple seconds in the OHL. You got one first round forward in the OHL. Uh, one first round forward in the queue. Like, the CHL should be split. Like, there shouldn't be... 90% of the talent in the WHL. And it's just dumb. Uh, the best defenseman in the queue is a uh, fourth rounder. So uh, that's kind of what I mean with that, guys. So yeah, guys, uh, that's kind of the idea. Um, let's get some more studs in the later rounds, uh, a few duds in the early rounds, and kind of vary it up a bit. I mean, right now, there is no point in even scouting. Um, yeah, you get a little bit better of an idea of... Um, which of the top 10 players you want to go after, but um, even then, a lot of the times you just go uh, GM options, scouting, uh, prospect game stats, and you see whatever guy has the highest overall currently, and you go for him because you know he's going to have uh, less growth he's got to go through before he's ready. So um, That's kind of uh, what I'd like to see in the NHL 15. Uh, that's the first change for GM mode. If you guys kind of like... Um, my opinions on this kind of thing and want to know more about it, uh, like the video and uh, subscribe to the channel and I'll definitely um, definitely bring out some more of these for you guys. And if you have any changes you want to see to GM mode or any, uh, of any modes in the game at all, uh, put those down in the comments and I'll let you know what I think of your changes as well. Uh, see you guys in the next video. Peace.